My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to a special West Coast edition of Mad Money. Welcome to Kramerica. Other than my friends, I'm just trying to make a little money. My job is not just to entertain, but to teach. So call me, 1-800-743-CNBC, or tweet me at Jim Kramer. All amazing things must come to an end. So today we bid adieu to the West Coast, where we learn about all things AI from NVIDIA, championed Apple's Vision Pro as a business-to-business -business product tied to NVIDIA's platform, and reiterated that you should own, not trade, both stocks, even as Apple's now under assault from the Justice Department for unfairly putting out a real good phone. Oh, just another week in the life of Silicon Valley, which we shared in the bounty of still one more week of record-breaking action. Even as the market lost team today, Dow slipping 305 points. This would be declining 0.14%. NASDAQ actually advancing just 1.6%. I'll take it. So what awaits us when we come in next week? As early as Monday, a familiar symbol returns to trading DJT for Donald J. Trump, which is the SPAC that converted Friday into Trump Media and Technology Group. I'm mentioning this vehicle because it could produce a big windfall for former President Trump, whose stake in the company is worth about $3 billion now and could be worth much more if the stock stays above certain levels for just a few weeks. His stock's going to be locked up for six months, but he could petition the company's board to begin selling his shares immediately. Worth noting because his company and his campaign apparently need money. Rarely do you get a SPAC like this with such political implications. We also get new home sales on Monday, and we know that housing is at the heart of the Federal Reserve's dilemma. See, the Fed needs more homes to be built, okay? Uh, it, he's got to bring down the cost of rent, but the home builders have been reluctant to increase construction because of higher mortgage rates. If Jay Powell wants more homes to be built, he should actually be cutting short rates. But if he does that, well, the price of housing will skyrocket. It's not even a Hobson's choice, for heaven's sake. Yesterday, the Justice Department came after Apple with everything it had, which was, candidly, not much. But Apple had a weak stock for ages, and the suit just brought out more sellers. I'm waiting to hear from Apple and Google about an artificial intelligence tie-in. And maybe more about the Vision Pro for the enterprise, like what we saw when NVIDIA live-streamed their Omniverse to the device, and we almost bought a car that didn't even exist. Yeah, the resolution was that great. The Reddit IPO came earlier this week, and it was in its success as the company managed to place enough stock with loyal Redditors, who for the most part didn't sell. The company isn't making money yet, but it's on track to get there eventually, although the stock started pulling back today. I'm less interested in this company, frankly, and more interested in whether the Redditors will return in force to focus on individual stocks again, like they once did with GameStop, which reports on Tuesday. I expect another dismal quarter, of course, but they never stopped anyone from the Wall Street bets department of Reddit. I don't expect a repeat of the action from three years ago, but perhaps they'll help prop up the stock after another horrendous set of numbers. Also on Tuesday, I think we could be in for some better than expected numbers from McCormick, the big maker of spices and seasonings. Oh, man, the last quarter, I'm calling it subpar. But I bet this terrific house of flavor brands without a lot of fattening product, by the way, could have upside. The last two food companies that reported Hormel and General Mills both had nice upside surprises. Let's see if three's the charm. Wednesday, we hear from the most consistent company of the week, which is Cintas. That's the uniform rental company we have on that's also expanded to providing all sorts of essential fire and safety services to small, medium-sized, and, yes, large businesses. Cintas has just repeatedly blown away the numbers. I expect nothing less this time. Bankable. And then there's a wild card, Carnival, the cruise line. Royal Caribbean has pulled away from the pack here. Can Carnival catch up? I think it'd be hard not to. Hey, next, Kimberly Clark. Yeah, story names. Got an analyst meeting on Wednesday. With a great brand and almost 4% yield, this company may be ready to play offense after some slowdown caused by the persistence of this work-from-home ethos. Remember, Kimberly Clark does a lot of enterprise business, keeping the office bathroom stock with soap and paper. I think the stock's pretty interesting down here. Thursday, Walgreens boosts the line. Speak of interesting down here, reports. And for once, I'm actually excited about this drugstore stock because there could be a turn in hand now that they brought in Tim Wentworth, at last, a seasoned healthcare exec and CEO. It may be too soon to make big changes, but something has to be done pronto. I'd just love to hear Wentworth lay out a plan for Walgreens to return to growth. He clearly has one, or else he would never have taken the job. It's not like he needs to work. It's not like he has to prove anything. He used to be the CEO of Express Scripts, one of the most successful pharmacy benefit managers ever, which he sold to Cigna for a cool $67 billion. We just got through the torture of a Fed meeting, so I'd like to keep the Fed speak to a minimum, please. 
But I do want to point out that on Friday, we get the personal consumption expenditures numbers, and this apparently is Jay Powell's favorite inflation reading. The bottom line, we're no longer fighting the Fed, people. They don't seem inclined to raise rates when they're supposed to be cutting them. That doesn't make sense. And that means even if we hear a lot of noise about an overheated inflation number, I'd, yes, consider it a buying opportunity. Let's go to Sean in Texas. Sean! Hey, Jim. I have a question uh, about a stock I originally bought for the dividend yield. The stock sure. is Pioneer, PXD. Uh, now, what? with it going back up some in the merger with Pioneer and Exxon, would it be a good idea to sell and purchase? I think you should sell, bring sell, the register sell, 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 and roll sell, sell, that money sell, into what the sell, stock sell, that sell. I tell club members that they should own, which is Cotera, C-T-R-A. That's a better value right now. Uh, Pioneer's is trapped by the price of Exxon, which is buying them. Let's go to Kevin in the Illini. Kevin. Hey, Jim. Booyah from Illini Nation. No, oh, booyah right back. What's up? Hey, uh, what's your thoughts on uh, Nike with the shift in strategy? I did see foot traffic was up 36% in January and February. Seems like maybe a buying opportunity to me. Uh, 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 I don't know. I've been struggling. The reason I've been struggling is since Dick's had a really good quarter, so I don't want to hear about the American consumer not spending that much on sporting goods, sneakers. Uh, I think that Nike's got to try to bottom here before I'll recommend it. Maybe at 90. It's got a great brand name, but it's, the, the next quarter is going to be weak, too. Let's go to Greg in Illinois. Greg. Booyah, Jim. I'm so happy to speak to you. How are you? I'm doing well, Greg. How about you? Awesome. I'm such a big fan. I've been watching your show since AMD was at $2. My question Holy to you is on cow. General Mills. The stock went oh, up. The General Mills quarter was really, really good. Bye, bye, bye. It was good, good quarter, and I recommend the stock. 3.4% without a lot of GLP-1 exposure. I think you're good to go on that one. All right, look, we're no longer fighting the Fed, which means if we get some inflation-related turbulence in the market, I consider it a chance to be able to do bye, bye, bye. Oh, man, I'm wrapping up my time in San Francisco with some of the Bay Area's top companies, including Block. The think that company recently surprised the upside. Hey, can you square up this stock for the portfolio? I got the company's top best. Then I'm talking to the CEO of one of the most powerful growth stories of the last few years. It's getting its mojo back. I'm finding out how Roblox has been building up its market value and its millions of users, and I'm liking the homework. Let's see what the company says. And even in data breach wasn't enough to keep Okta down. So can this identity software company keep performing? I'm going to talk to the CEO. So stay with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on X. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Mentions. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.